Welcome to this video from Learn Electrics. This is number five in our 18th edition series, and we hope to help you to build up your knowledge ready for the 18th edition exam, or maybe you just want to update and boost your understanding. This video is about the voltage drop calculations that you will get in the exam. They are not that difficult to learn, and we will take things in nice easy steps with worked examples. There are three favourite question types that the exam setters like to ask, and we will cover these here so that you are fully confident in finding the answers. You will need a calculator, but nothing more difficult than multiply and divide. Trust me. The three question types are, number one, what is the maximum permitted voltage drop? Number two, what is the actual volts drop for a given circuit? And number three, what is the maximum length of cable that can be installed to not exceed the maximum permitted voltage drop? And that's it. If you know how to find these three answers, you really have cracked it. Let's begin with a quick understanding of just what voltage drop is and how it affects cables and circuits. What is voltage drop? It is simply the difference in the voltage between the consumer unit or distribution board and the furthest point of use on each circuit. For example, the cooker, the shower, the furthest light, the electric gates, and so on. If we use a 7 kilowatt cooker as an example, we can show how the voltage drop applies to that circuit. A 230 volt 7 kilowatt cooker will consume 30 amps of current at full load. But when fully loaded, when everything is turned on, maybe at Christmas or for Sunday lunch, the voltage appearing at the cooker may only be 220 volts. This means that 10 volts has been lost in the cable. With 30 amps of current flowing along the cable, that means that up to 300 watts of power will be lost in the cable. And there are two important points here. First, 300 watts of power is going to warm the cable up. And secondly, someone has to pay for that 300 watts. It's not getting to the cooker, so it's lost energy to the customer, thrown away money. We can start by looking in the wiring regulations and answering the first question. What is the maximum permitted voltage drop and where do we find the answer? If you've watched other videos from Learn Electrics, you will know that page three of the wiring regulations book is our go-to page. Always go to page three first. It is full of lots of information. Page three is the main contents page and scanning down towards the bottom, we find the appendices. Look at appendix four. It says current carrying capacity and voltage drop for cables. Now that might help. We can turn to page 373 as directed to the start of appendix four. But that doesn't help a great deal in this case except that we know the information we need is somewhere in Appendix 4. But I don't fancy looking through 72 pages to find the answer, so let's narrow it down even further. Go to the index and find voltage, which happens to be on page 555. Scanning down voltage, there are just a few entries, and we want something that points to Appendix 4. And then we find one that says voltage drop limits and it tells us to look at Appendix 4, Section 6.4. So, turn to page 383, and we will find in Appendix 4, Section 6.4. That sounds good. And there is Table 4AB, Voltage Drop. Now we have this table, we can find the maximum permitted voltage drop. Table 4AB tells us that a low voltage installation supplied by a public distribution system in other words, the national grid can have up to 3% voltage drop in a lighting circuit and up to 5% for any other circuit, the shower, the cooker, sockets, water heater, and so on. But we need to know the maximum voltage drop in volts, not in percentages, and this slide should help. For lighting, 3% is found by dividing 3 by 100 and multiplying by 230 volts and the answer that pops out of the calculator is 6.9 volts maximum. Do the same for the other circuits, and we have 5 divided by 100, 
and multiplied by 230, giving us a maximum of 11.5 volts for all non-lighting circuits. Now that we know the maximum voltage drops, we will have something to compare our actual results to. Moving on now to actual volts drop and some very easy calculations. This is the second type of exam question and the most likely that you will be asked. The key to all this is this little term here, MV slash A slash M. This is pronounced millivolts per amp per meter or just MVAM. What is it? Any circuit will lose a certain amount of voltage into the cable. This voltage can be measured in millivolts or thousandths of a volt. And it will lose a certain number of millivolts for every amp that flows through the cable for every meter length of the cable. And the smaller the cable size or CSA, the more voltage that will be lost into the cable. It is harder for current to flow through a smaller copper conductor and it is harder for current to flow through a longer distance of copper conductor. Here we have the formula to use for calculating the actual voltage drop in a cable. It looks complicated, it isn't. Just below the yellow box we have listed the four terms that we use in the calculation and what they mean. And the number here, 1000, is there to convert millivolts back to ordinary volts so that we can make a direct comparison to the maximum permitted voltage drop from table 4AB earlier. Every cable has its own data page and in this video we will focus just on twin and earth cable or flat cable as the book calls it. Turn to page 409 in the wiring regulations and we will find table 4D5. The leftmost column lists the size or CSA of the conductors and the rightmost column lists the MVAM number for each conductor size. Find 2.5 mm conductor size in the leftmost column and then trace along the row to the far right column where we will find the number 18 in this case. This is the MVAM number for 2.5 mm twin and earth cable. This size cable, 2.5 mm, will lose 18 millivolts into the cable for every amp of current that flows and for every meter length of the cable. Let us now work through a typical exam question and see the calculation in action. The question is, what is the actual volts drop for a 3 kilowatt water heater wired in 2.5 millimeter twin and earth cable if the length of the circuit is 44 meters? And is the actual voltage drop acceptable? What do we need to know? The box at number one shows us that we need the MVAM number, the design current or IB. In other words, what the water heater is designed to consume when it is turned on. And we need to know the length. We can enter some data into the box at number two just from reading the question. In the third section, we will calculate IB from the power and voltage. 3 kilowatts is the same as 3000 watts. So 3000 watts divided by 230 volts gives us 13 amps of current. We can enter this in the information box and move on to calculating the actual volts drop. The voltage drop will be 18 multiplied by 13 multiplied by 44 and divided by 1000. And the answer that pops out of the calculator should be 10.3 volts, give or take a very tiny amount. So our actual volts drop is 10.3 volts and the maximum permitted is 11.5 volts. Our actual volts drop is within the limits and it is acceptable. How easy is that? Let's try another voltage drop question. A 65 meter lighting circuit is wired in one millimeter twin and earth cable with a maximum load of four amps. What is the actual volts drop in the cable and is this satisfactory? Let's begin by writing down what we know. IB, the current is given in the question. The length is also given. Now look at page 409 for twin and earth flat cables and find MVAM for one millimeter cable. And we find this is 
44. Now do the calculation. 44 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 65 and divided by 1000 equals 11.44. So the actual volts drop is 11.44 volts. And the second part of the question, is this an acceptable voltage drop? Is it less than the permitted maximum? Well, the answer, no, it is not acceptable. This is a lighting circuit and the maximum permitted volts drop is 3% or 6.9 volts. The actual volts drop is almost double the maximum permitted value. In the exam, always make sure of what type of circuit it is and the question will always tell you. Now we can move on to the maximum length of a cable. The third style of exam question is, what is the maximum length that a cable can be without exceeding the maximum permitted volts drop? We must now transpose or rearrange the voltage drop formula and we show the new formula below. Here are the two rearranged formulas shown together. We are using the same terms but they have been transposed and you will need to learn both formats. The important difference is that the actual volts drop has been changed to maximum volts drop. This will always be 6.9 volts for lighting and 11.5 volts for everything else. In this next question, number three, let us calculate just what is the maximum length of cable in the last question. We know that 65 meters was too long, so what is the right length for that size of cable? As before, the maximum design current IB is 4 amps. The circuit is wired in 1 millimeter twin and earth with an MVAM value of 44. And we must not exceed 6.9 volts. So what do we know? IB is 4 amps. The maximum volts drop for lighting is 6.9 volts. And the MVAM number for 1 millimeter twin and earth is 44. Write down what we know, and this is a good habit to get into. Put the numbers into the formula, and what do we get? 6.9 times 1,000 gives us 6,900 on the top row. 44 times 4 gives us 176 on the bottom row. Divide 6,900 by 176, and we have 39.2 metres. To not exceed 6.9 volts voltage drop, the cable should not exceed 39.2 metres in length. Can you see how useful that this is when deciding where to position lights? If it's not far enough, you may have to recalculate with 1.5 millimetre cable or even larger sizes to find a suitable cable size. We can do another question on length. Question 4. A 230 volt 7 kilowatt cooker is to be wired in 6 millimeter twin and earth cable. What is the maximum length of cable to not exceed the maximum permitted volts drop? Again, write down what we know as we find it. The maximum volts drop is found on page 383. 230 volts times 5% is 11.5 volts. Page 409 is where we find the MVAM number for 6mm cable, and this is 7.3. And IB, the design current, is 7000 watts divided by 230 volts to give us 30.43 amps. Run that through the formula, and we have 11,500 on the top, divided by 222 on the bottom, our maximum length is 51.8 meters. Hopefully, you have learnt a lot in this video. Practice really is the key to being good at calculations, and it makes you look competent and professional on site. Let's leave you with some questions to try on your own. But first, the answers to the two questions on adiabatic equations from the last 18th edition video. Question 1 was answer A. 16 millimeters and question two was answer d 2.5 millimeters and so to questions for this video on voltage drop question one 
is asking for the actual volts drop for the circuit described here. Choose the most appropriate answer from the four choices shown, as you would in the exam. And question two is asking for the maximum length of a cable to not exceed the voltage drop limit. Again, choose your answer from the four choices offered. The answers to both these questions will be in the next 18th edition video. Replay the video to understand the formulas and study the methods if you need to. And that really is the best way to learn. So with that, good luck. Well, that's it. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable and that you have added more knowledge to your mental toolbox. By clicking on subscribe below, you will have access to all of our tech tip videos and you'll also ensure that you don't miss our next weekly video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us and we do appreciate that small act. It does make us feel that our effort is worthwhile. Tapping in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all the videos. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.